So I wanted to ask you, and this is a bit of a personal question. If you don't want to answer, you don't have to. Mm-hmm. When obviously the news in 2015 in passing away, were you surprised by that or did you see it coming at all? I guess anytime that sort of thing happens, you know, it's always a bit of a surprise and it's a bit of a slap in the face of that sort of thing. But it was, um, I can't say I was completely thrown off because, I mean, just mm-hmm. just like everybody else, you know, I had seen some of the performance videos and stuff and just these little things that would get shown online or, or on social media and stuff. And it's like, oh, man, he's he's not looking good, man. So it was it was tough to see those kind of things. And so that kind of maybe prepared you more for the inevitable to come. But it's like when it finally happens, it's, it's just really sad. And it's a, a helpless feeling for you know, even me, much less his, his old bandmates who would have done anything to help him, you know, and mm-hmm. tried, but, you know, so it was, uh, it was a real shame, but I remember we got, we got together and tried to think of what to do. And we, we wound up putting up that song Atlanta from number four. And, uh, they kind of went through the tracks in the studio and just talked about Scott and the genius of his vocal and all that kind of stuff and put out like a nice little tribute. Yeah. I remember that. that. Yeah which I thought was really good, but yeah, I mean, we, we, we still talk about him, you know, all the time. I mean, he's, you know, how great that guy was, you know? Yeah, for sure. You know, such I mean, a great singer. So. I'm just curious if I may ask, what was the, uh, like the Leo brothers, like how, how did they handle Scott's death? Were they thrown off by it? Did they, I mean, if anyone, I would assume they would have seen it coming the most. Would that be fair to say? Well, yeah, they certainly knew, knew him better than anyone and um, had been through, you know, all the peaks and valleys with him and uh, could see it. And uh, I think they were kind of in the same spot. Maybe the rest of us were where they weren't, weren't a band anymore. And he was just out doing a solo thing and just through mutual people and seeing what was happening. They could just see, you know, it, him having a hard time and they felt bad. And they're, you know, like the rest of us, their hearts went out and just like, oh, it's just, this is tragic. It's like you see you see it coming, and it's like, but all of us feel like there's nothing we can do, and it's a very frustrating feeling, you know, when you see that that sort of thing happening. So, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I remember us, you know, it was we were in the studio working when all that was happening, and uh, it was very very sad, you know, and very somber day, and just talking about you know stories and the good times, and just it's just real shame, you know, and it ended the way it did. Everybody could kind of, you know, everybody could at the same time could be like, yeah, kind of. I mean, I heard like everybody knew, you know, back in the day, like Lane, everybody knew, like, yeah, this yeah. is what's gonna, you know, so. Yeah, actually, Lane's death to me is one of the most tragic. I mean, I'm reading the stories and the history of him. It's that was like a several year long decay. It was very, very mm-hmm. sad. So you were working with STP when you heard the news that Scott had passed. Yeah, we well, I wasn't in the room when the news came. I remember somebody else had texted me who kind of was in those circles and I made sure the other guys knew and mm. um, two of them did, one of them didn't. And then the next day we were in the studio, really? you know, obviously didn't get much work done. You know, yeah, we just kind of talked about that. Everybody, it's just a little still shell shocked. It's like, you know, even though you see it coming, like when it finally happens, it's still, you know, it's, it's a big blow. And and then they were just trying to figure out, you know, something that they could put out as a as a tribute to him and just let everybody know that, you know, despite them not being in a band and certain things being reported about the ups and downs and whatever, the business stuff that they love the guy and, you know. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So yeah. I mean, one thing I'm very curious about is what was Chester's reaction to Scott's death? Would you would you know? I don't think he was there right off that that day I'm speaking of. So I'm not sure if I ever really personally spoke with him or, or was in the room as hmm. that came up. Um, I'm sure it hit him pretty, you know, pretty hard. I mean, he, he was a, definitely a big Scott fan, but I really don't know. That's fair enough. That That's fair enough. Yeah. So, I mean, one thing that I think is kind of forgotten about when it comes to Stone Table Pilots and like the, the human toll of it is it's not just Scott they lost. I mean, shortly after they lost Chester too. Was there ever like, I mean, that, takes that was a lot the of, shock. Yeah. That yeah. one was the shock. <laughs> yeah, for sure. sure. I remember I was actually like, very shocked by the Chester one. I remember, like, it's one of those things where, like, I actually do remember exactly where I was when I heard the news and all that sort of thing. Um, for the surviving members of the band, I mean, that's two people within about two and a half years that passed away. Yeah. Were they, was there ever any thought after that of, like, let's just pack it in? Or were they always still able to keep going forward? Well, you know, 
we had already started, you know, a record and had music and the guys still had, you know, a passion for their prior catalog and everything and, and the songs they had started. So obviously, you know, it took some time, but then decided like, well, how, what does moving forward look like? It's so hard, you know, when you, when you have that sort of loss and, um, but I think just uh, between fans showing that they still had an interest and in, in wanted to hear music and hear the old songs and some new stuff. And they decided to, you know, give it another shot and just see if they could find anybody. But that was a painful time because <laughs> the audition process is, oof, that can be rough sometimes, you know, and, and, and a little disheartening because you have high hopes for so many things, but if, as it's not coming together, it's like, everybody's kind of like, oh, is it going to happen? It's like, what are we doing here? You know? And, mm. and then finally some things start to take shape and and you could see it. It's just a feeling, you know, it's like, you know, if it feels right or not, you know, and, and you know, if, if you're, if you're phoning it in or if you're, or if you're faking it or if, if you're, if you're not believing it and you're the guy in the band and yeah, nobody yeah, listening yeah. is going to believe it, you know what I mean? So it had yeah. to start there and it had to feel right. And for them to know it was the right thing. And so eventually, um, time came to, to do some more music, you know, so made that first record is, you know, proper rock record that came out. And then the next one is more of the acoustic album yeah. called Perdita yeah. and Perdita is lost. And so it kind of was mm. more of the reflection on just a lot of the loss that had happened, you know, it was sort of one of the, the themes. When you work with someone like Scott, you know him for years and then, you know, what happens happens. Is it hard for you to keep going or is it just something that you got to just keep doing? Well, it's, it's always strange, you know, when that kind of thing happens because you think, man, I spent a lot of time like in a room with that dude. And it's not just mm. me being a hired help, me being a friend and, and like talking to him and, and all this stuff. The Chester thing equally, you know, it's like, man, I was the nicest dude in the world. Like, how did that, how did it wind up here? You know, it's always strange. Like when I listen to this stuff, I can never hear a record I've worked on the same way that anybody else is going to hear it or the same way that I would listen to another record I didn't work on because I'm still sort of immersed in it somehow. And within each album that I've ever been a part of, it's like there's music and I can still dig on the sounds and I can still think, Oh, I use this microphone here or this, but there's a whole lot of life that surrounds, surrounds each record. And we're all going through different things as we make the record. And they're all a part of those records for me. And when I hear them, I can think about those things as well. And, and, feel those situations you know so so yeah i mean you do get to become fairly close with some of these people and and get insights into their life you know and see them just as human beings and not as these big rock stars and stuff and so yeah it's always it's always a shame when you hear of, of those things happening and um just like it would be for you know found out some friend you grew up with you know had passed or something it's it's kind of the same at that point so um yeah it's nuts but yeah you just you, you know keep going and it's just all part of all part of life i was there right when they were getting it started again and i was happy to see them you know get back together and they'd had you know a good bit of time apart so they were refreshed and, and ready to to give it another go so That's awesome so that first record they did when they they first got back i wasn't a part of that uh my friend uh another guy from atlanta named russ fowler did that record okay. and because i was really busy and kind of full time with josh abraham doing all of his records at that time so i wasn't really around so much for that i know um eric had his studio the drummer eric kretz had a studio downtown and they did most of it there okay. but i um I'm not really sure uh, what shape Scott was in at that point, you know, mm -hmm. um, I just know over time and obviously we all know where it went, but yeah. he, he, you know, it, it's that sort of thing gets to a point where it does sort of deteriorate where there's not really any coming back, it seems, you know, and it's a shame, you know, you can see glimpses of, of, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, the good days in there, but, but I'm not really sure on that record where he was at. At that point, I really hadn't seen him in quite a while. Yeah, kind of when they got, you know, after that. So, yeah. Did you work again with Scott after Velvet Revolver, or was that your last time working with him? There were a couple of solo songs, sort of in the mid two thousands, that Scott had worked on, but I'm not sure if anything ever came out. We yeah, did like good. four songs sometime in the mid two thousands mm -hmm. that were going to be a solo record for him, but uh, 
I don't know that those ever eventually came out. I think we pretty much finished them. But And then a few times um, working with Josh Abraham, we were working with some other artists and we had Scott come in to help cool. write on stuff because he was really good at just melodies and stuff. And, and so he came around. And I remember that time being just all positive and fun and him being in good spirits. 